I just want to say I love how I love how superimposed I look. I look like <laughs> I look like I'm riding the it's dog. It's the neck. It's the neck. I look area. like I'm riding the dog on Neverending Story. <laughs> <laughs> like Falcor. <laughs> Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, welcome to another awesome episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your honorable and loyal host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. I don't know why I said honorable, right? That just first thing that came out. Yeah, I think I'm pretty honorable. Your honor. That's what I should be called. That's my nickname, your honor. Um, it's not. Okay, look, I think um, this episode is awesome. I really do. We got a, a, a great group of guys together. They have a fantastic project out. It's called Crowd Mouth. And basically what it is, and we go into detail here, uh, into the podcast of what this is, but it's basically a social media plugin, right? Um, to basically for any creator to harness their engagement. So basically, um, you know, you share stuff online all the time for your favorite artist or creator or whoever it may be, right? And you don't really get anything for it, um, except the joy of sharing it, uh, which is great. But now they've created a system that you, allows you to get points for those sharing. And you can build up those points and use it for your favorite artist to get like free cool gifts. Like, I don't know, you know, signed records or whatever they do, right? If they're a musician, something from them. If they're whatever they do, you can get something from them. It's something we're probably going to get on for sure. Um, I'm like, super excited about it. Um, so... It's Aston, so the, the founders here, we got Aston Teague, who is Bob Schneider's manager, um, Jonathan Clay, who is, you know, lead singer of Jamestown Revival, um, phenomenal band, and then we got Donnie Geralt, he is basically the tech, you know, the smarts, the brains of it all, the tech side of, you know, m making that come together, um, and yeah, you know, they got them all there for a reason, right? Jonathan's there to basically, from the artist's perspective, right? The creator's perspective, making sure that the, you know, that it works right, that it's feasible. Uh, because honestly, that's, you know, if you can't get creators behind it, it's not going to work. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool thing. It's coming out right now. And, you know, in the next couple days, and yeah, it's just a really cool podcast, really cool Look, this podcast is about fan interaction and how that's being updated and how that's changing and the history of it. We talk about the history of it too, right? Like, so just interacting with fans, you know, as artists. Um, it's a cool podcast. Really, really, really cool. So talk a lot about, you know, the app, how it works, where it's going, what it could do, how you can use it to get a bunch of cool stuff from your favorite people on the planet basically again work you already do you're gonna get some for that's pretty cool it's free all right it's, uh, for you using it it's free just to get on use it share some stuff get maybe a free whatever i think it's super cool i'd never heard of it i couldn't believe it. it's not out there already um it's not a new social media platform again we get into all the details of what this is and what it is and if it sounds confusing so check them out crowd mouth you're going to love it. It's going to be a new thing you're going to hear all over the place. So, um, yeah, super excited. So, yeah, these are three great guys. Uh, you know, it, it was an awesome conversation. I can see why Bob has Aston as his manager uh, for sure. Donnie, you know, super smart guy about stuff I know nothing, right? Technology and coding and the cloud, what the hell that is. Um, and Jonathan, um, uh, from Jamestown Re revival, super cool. You know, me and him are just kind of joking the whole podcast, right? Like we're just goofballs. I think I could tell that right away, which I loved. Uh, honestly, we'd love to get him on just to talk about Jamestown revival. All right. That makes sense. We need to do that. So anyway, awesome episode guys. Hope you enjoy it before we get to it. Here's a quick word from our sponsor, Texas real food. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, I wanted to talk to you about other things that are on the Texas Real Food site that are just as amazing as putting in your zip code, finding the best place around you that's serving, you know, all natural, fresh, organic ingredients, all right? There's resources on there. Reviews, blogs, articles, and most importantly, Texas Real Food recipes. So you can find things on there that really aren't on any other site. I promise you that. And stuff that's pretty standard, but we give it a twist, right? That's the chef way. Something familiar with a twist. So we've got, for instance, cinnamon spiced hot cross buns. You can also find a great Texas strawberry cheesecake recipe. Just amazing stuff. So please check it out at texasrealfood.com. All right, back to the show. All right, guys, thank you again so much for listening and watching and supporting the show. We really do appreciate it. Look, if you ever have any questions or just want to, I don't know, throw a suggestion out, something, you, you think, oh, man, they, this would be cool if they had this person on, or God, why do you guys do this? Send us an email, howdy, thelonestarplate.com, or send me an email, patrick at texasrealfood.com. Um, yeah. And if you want to follow us on social media, Lone Star Plate TX. Okay, and if you're on YouTube right now watching this, hit the subscribe button, please. That would be awesome. Um, and the notification bell lets you know when we have new content coming out, which is what almost every day, two episodes a week. All right, look, enough of me blabbing. I do this all the time. I apologize. I'm a blabber. Um, let's get to this episode. Okay, so Crowd Mouth with Aston Teague, Jonathan Clay, and, D- and Donnie Gerald. Enjoy. Landed on Crowd Mouth, and you're asking yourself, what is it? The short answer, it's a platform to help you grow fast. Through Crowdmouth, your fans help you spread the word about your content. As a way to say thanks, you offer them something in return. This could be as simple as a discount at your merch store or as personal as a thank you video. How you reward your fans is entirely up to you and your creativity. Our goal is to amplify your voice and help you spread the word about whatever it is that you do. Thanks, guys, for joining. This is uh, I'm super excited to talk to you all about this, um, this project you'll have uh, going on together. So I thought just the best way to anytime there's more than one person this is usually what I do. I just have everyone introduce themselves and maybe just say what you're, you what you do for uh, for crowd mouth. I actually am going to play the trailer ahead of this that y'all have not trailer the, the video y'all have on YouTube. that's like a minute, you know, sort of explain. I'm going to have that played before hand cool. just so y'all are aware of what the people are here and ahead of time but yeah um donnie let's start with you you jumped you jumped in first really quick are we pre-recorded and editing all this yes yeah we're not live okay we're definitely definitely not live uh yeah (laughs) we keep it uh relaxed yeah it goes to editing uh after this great correct uh yeah donnie go ahead brother yeah my name is donnie Giro. uh here at crowd mouth my job is to help take the vision that these two creators have put forth and turn it into some sort of tech. And that's what I'm here to help do. You know, I'm a, I'm a creator at heart, but I'm not any good. And so I get to play in the game by being the guy in the business and in the tech side of it. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We've had a great run so far and I'm looking forward to what's coming next with us. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead. So my name is Aston, Aston Teague. Um, I'm a uh, artist manager by day, I guess. I have a couple of different artists that I manage at, here out of Austin. One's a guy named Bob Schneider, uh, who I know you've had on the podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my background is primarily in business, music business, now technology. We, uh, we hired, we brought Donnie into the equation because we were, you know, we realized pretty quickly we needed somebody with some tech experience. Uh, which has been great and donnie and i have actually known each other for going on 35 years now uh jonathan and i have known each other yeah yeah we'll we'll get into that in a second but uh jonathan and i have known each other for probably 15 years now and um i was a singer songwriter at one point here in austin and um you know this this idea really spawned from the the process of of managing artists and you know jonathan obviously being an artist uh so my focus right now is, is really the vision of the company, driving the, the marketing and the outreach and, and trying to figure out, you know, who's the proper audience for this, for this platform. 
and uh, we're having some fun, man. We're excited about it. Oh yeah. I am Jonathan Clay, and my job at Crowdmouth is basically to make sure it feels good to use, and you know, just trying to trying to uh, approach things from the artist, the user's perspective. Um, I happen to be in a band called Jamestown Revival, so I try to bring some of that experience into it, uh, and just you know, ideation, and features, and, uh, and stuff like that. So taking things from conceptualization to uh, actualization. Well, actually, I don't do that part. All the all the smart guys do that, Donnie included. But uh, some of the some of the mushy gushy stuff. That's that's what I like. Hell yeah. No, y'all make a great team. Everyone's got their thing, right, that they bring to the table. No, that's awesome. Man, when I heard, this, literally, when I heard about this, I was like, wow. Okay, why is there, you know, it's it's like something you always knew you needed, but it wasn't there, right, sort of thing. It it, it, it just makes sense. When you hear about it, it just makes sense that this this, this idea is out there. Um, absolutely. You know, it was the same right? thing I thought. Yeah. Right, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because it just makes sense. Like, yeah, people already share this stuff anyway. It's like, why not get something for it? I mean, immediately is it just, yeah, to me, it just was like, okay, yeah, totally. Crowd mouth. This totally makes sense. Yeah. Holy shit. How did you hear about it? I'm just curious. How did you hear about it? Was it through? Uh... Through a Facebook group in uh, the FAYM Facebook oh, group. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, I saw a post about it that somebody wrote something that said like you Aston had started something like this this thing and I was like whoa what what is this and when I read about it, I was like dude what the hell this is this is actually very cool I could see this just like Scott taken off like it totally makes sense um especially just you know I'm very involved with Bob's fan like you said Bob's been on the podcast I've, I've interviewed Bob lots of times and you know Bob's always been just super nice and generous and um and so I'm sort of connected with the fans still, right? Like I always yeah. keep track of what's going on. They're very cool. They're very, they're very, um, he just has a great community around him. Bob does yeah, do. like from what I've seen. Right. So it just yeah. seemed like, okay, these people love sharing this stuff already, right? That you think, okay, if there's, if there's this one group doing it, you know, there's tons of fan groups that are already, you know, so it just made sense. Um, but yeah, that's how I heard about it, but it immediately yeah. stuck out to me. That, that's exactly how the process began was managing Bob's you know business as a whole. I realized pretty quickly there was a lot of people that were taking the links that we would share. So if it's a, a ticket link or something like that, we'd post it on Facebook. Within a couple minutes, somebody would share, you know, 50 people typically would share that link. And I thought, man, that's great that there's 50 people doing it, but there's 50,000 followers on Facebook. How do we get them excited yeah. about doing the same thing? Sure. And, uh, you know, when John and so again, John was was on tour and it's a really cool story. I'd rather him tell it, but uh, he was on tour and, uh, and right when COVID happened and uh, you know, he called me and, and basically said, Hey man, I'm, I'm home and you know, uh, hungry. What, what, what are we going to do for the next year while we're in quarantine? And uh, so I pitched him on the idea of, Hey, there's this idea of, you know, basically creating a, a digital street team where you can incentivize your fans to share on your behalf and you give them really cool, unique rewards for doing so. And I think John's, you know, I, John's reaction was exactly like yours. He, he first said, you know, uh, well, there's gotta be something else out there that's already doing, you know, someone's already done this, right? Totally. I, said, ah, I don't know, man. I've, I've looked around, I can't find anything. So, um, you know, he, he hung up the phone, did his due diligence, called me back and a couple of days later and said, Hey, I can't find anything remotely close to this and um you know at least not any, anybody that's doing it well and uh there might you know. be like individualized right like an artist may be doing something like that specifically for his fan but not a platform that brings a bunch of different creators together to do that that's it exactly right? yeah there are some artists that we've come across since then uh, shinoda from uh, lincoln park he had a program he was doing just himself which you know, was similar to the mechanics of crowd mouth where you're, you know, incentivizing your fans to share things and giving them rewards for doing it. But our goal is to make this available and accessible and very uh, effective for the millions of creators that are out there, not just musicians, but all kinds of creators. So it can be podcasters. Podcasters, we think, are really going to 
take off on this platform. Wow. YouTubers, Twitch, you know, gamers, TikTok influencers, you, you name it. If you're trying to drive content to your or drive awareness about your content, you should use a platform like Crowdmouth to do it. Yeah, it's such a great idea because it's just about the, sh you know, the sharing and reward aspect to it, right? It, it's like, it, it's very, um, what, what's that term? It's uh, transactional, right? So it's just over and over and over and over again. I have a question, okay, because, you know, maybe it's out there, but I don't know. One, first question anybody's going to want to know, is it free? Okay, that's the number one, right? That's what I would want to know right away. Is it free to use? It's free to use, right? It's free for fans to use, yes. Yeah, so that, that's what I mean. Fan, from a fan standpoint, yep. listening, right, that, that they yeah, want to yeah. use the app. Okay. Fans are free always. Um, you know, we, we believe that the more fans we have on the platform, the better, obviously. Uh, that's going to – where the fans are, the creators will follow, and vice versa. You know, we think that, it, obviously, if there's a lot of really great creators on the platform, more fans are going to come in as well. So, 100%. Yeah, but there will be over time a, you know, a, a pricing structure for creators to access the platform. That makes mm -hmm. sense. That, yeah. I mean, that, that a hundred makes sense. But from a fan standpoint, right? Like what's the first thing anybody wants? Is it free? What's this going to cost me? Right. Okay. Oh, it's free. I can use this out and then get some shit from this, from stuff right. I already do. Come That's on. it. Yeah. Yeah. You're becoming a part of the team is what you're doing. You're becoming, I a like part the street team, uh, uh, you know, analogy you made that, that makes t bringing that back. Cause what happened to street teams? They got that's, demolished. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jonathan and I, when we were both starting out, you know, 15 years ago as singer songwriters here in Austin, I mean, we use street teams all the time. It was MySpace, and it was yeah. telling <laughs> your, your MySpace followers to, to yeah. go meet you at a Starbucks and I'm going to give you each one of you 20 posters and you guys go yeah. show or whatever you guys go post them around town totally. and the juice lands and the, and the coffee shops and all that. And literally, as soon as I started seeing this behavior online, I thought, man, it's, it's the digital street team. Like, we need to capitalize on this. We need to bring this back because it's a very effective way. It's a, it's a grassroots way of doing things. But, you know, that's really what Crowdmouth is. It's a word of mouth marketing platform for content creators to be able to incentivize and really engage with their fans and make their fans a part of their team directly, one to one, artist to fan directly. So we're really excited about that that aspect of it. We think that's what makes it special, and um, you know we're we're hoping that everybody else agrees once they once they try the platform. Oh, for sure, Donnie. When you when they approached you, did they? It, was it them that came to you with this idea and said, "Oh, yeah, I'll answer that while he's." While <laughs> as soon as I went to him, <laughs> as soon as right as soon as I threw him the ball, he was like. I'm out. He gets stage fright. He gets, <laughs> he gets really bad stage fright. Yeah. That, no, he's back, I think. Yeah, he's yeah. back. He's back. <laughs> you got us, Donnie? Let's see here. He froze for a second. Go ahead, Aston. We'll we'll bring him yeah. in as soon so, as he... Yeah, so uh, again, Donnie and uh, I... Have been, yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, you're getting a little... You're a little <laughs> broken up, buddy. So... Donnie and I have been friends since we were children, uh, yeah. literally since we were uh, probably I was five or six. All right. Sorry about that. That's all right. We lived in the same neighborhood uh, growing up and his mom was my sixth grade math teacher. We've known each other, you know, went through elementary through high school together. So, um, you know, Jonathan and I were very much excited about this for the first few months. It was just him and I uh, really trying to bring this idea to at least some level of prototype. Sure. And, uh, and we realized very quickly when we started talking about tech that, you know, Donnie, we were going to need somebody and Donnie, of course. Had, yeah, you know, and so Donnie had, a, has a ton of great experience. I'll let him tell you about that. But, uh, we, we approached him to answer your question. We were looking for someone who had that background and experience and his, you know, situation just happened to line up perfectly with, with our timing. So. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Donnie, what was that like? No, it's frozen. Okay, well, look, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let me. Add, I got a quick question. Oh, just, I mean, well, oh. uh, this this will be okay. Uh, Go ahead, Donnie. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you hear me? Is it working? I can hear you. Go ahead. Is my, is my connection not working? Can you hear me? Yeah, your connection for some reason okay. went like went I'll, bad. I'll I don't the know. Video, maybe that'll help our connection. I don't know. So, um.
<laughs> Apologies, guys. Well, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, so, you know, it, this is probably the fourth or fifth idea. It's not working. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. It's delayed. Yeah. He just keeps trying to muster up the courage to get it out. He just can't <laughs> he just do can't, it. He just can't. All right, we'll come back, Donnie. Let's just wait till we have a better connection. I mean, just for the sake of hearing this back, like right as a in an episode yeah. uh, for that. No, no big deal. Look, I got stuff to move. You know, we'll move on. We'll we'll bring it back. It's no big deal. Um, look, there's three of y'all, right? So we'll just keep going till I don't have anybody left. That's Perfect. what I'm gonna do. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, look, th this is a question I had just quickly. Like, you get a point, right, for sharing something. Let's say you get a point. Do your points go across artists and creators, or it's for this creator, I have this many points, for this creator, I have this many points? Points are creator specific Got because it. as a creator, if you're fulfilling a reward for somebody, that, that it's, it's a thank you to that fan for helping spread your work. And you don't want to be thanking somebody for spreading somebody else's work. It needs to be your work they're spreading. So you essentially have a bank. You have a wallet in Crowdmouth. And in your wallet, you can see, you could almost think of them like coins for different artists, you know, and you've got 20 points for Jamestown. You got 20 points for Bob. You got 15 points for this creator and so on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Totally. You know, there may be down the road, maybe there's like a double point system. So like you get a point for the artist, but then you also get a crowd mouth point. Right. And then uh, there's like an accumulation of crowd mouth points that are just as a general that y'all use or something. I don't know, guys, I'm spitballing. OK, yeah, well, it, it almost feels like maybe you sat in some of our strategy meetings recently because we, we talk a lot about, you know, those those types of things. We call them universal crowd mouth points. Yeah. We uh, you know, our roadmap, our product roadmap is is deep and long and, and we're working on that, you know, every day. Sure. But, uh, that's of course, of course, of course. Yeah. And that's something we've thought a lot about too, is, you know, what, what do points look like in the future? Um, uh, as of right now, you essentially get one for every click you get every unique click that say, let's, as a fan, when you share this with your friend, when you share a campaign link with your friends, let's say it's Jamestown revivals, new, new single that's coming out or just came out. You share that link as a fan with your friends. Every time one of your friends clicks on it, the first time, the unique click, you earn a point for that. So those are points, those points accrue, and then you know they can be used only specifically to the creator that you earn them from. So you can specific, you know, you can't earn points from Bob Schneider and then go use those points for Jamestown rewards. Yeah, totally, totally. Which absolutely, so, hundred makes sense. Yeah, and there's a lot of different ways and strategies that we're considering for you know how to handle points in the future. You know, are, are clicks worth more points in the future? If you want to really push a particular campaign as a creator, you may make a click more valuable, if that makes sense. So we're working sure. on ideas yeah. and and uh, we have thought about a lot about universal crowd mouth points, uh, what that means, what those would be worth and what, you know, what you'd be able to redeem for them. So, yeah, but I like where you're thinking because you, you clearly get this platform and it's it's nice to hear people, you know, when they when they get it immediately, it's it's validation. Yeah. For, Nice absolutely hear. i mean all these things are because it's a good idea right like all these other stuff that you want to add on or this could you could do that th that's when you know you got some yeah. you know for real you know all these other things come out and of course these what i'm saying seems pretty logical you'd eventually brainstorm and get to that same point you know obviously uh for sure no it totally makes sense to me um donnie let's get you to answer before something happens here i'm just you know let's just get this you got this this is all you okay donnie believe yes in you. we believe in you <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I'm not sure what the question was. At this Just point. like how, you know, like how you came into the pro, they approached you, you know, you're bringing this tech side, you know, obviously they have an idea and creators always have an idea. You know, I'm very creative myself, but technically I don't know how to make a lot of things happen. Right. So I rely on other people to, you know, put it into make it physical. Right. You know, so, right. you know, what, what was your, yeah, let's just start there. Like, you know, they yeah, approach so, you. So, so, what are you thinking? Do you like, I, did you like the idea when you first heard it? So this was this was uh, in a series of ideas that came to me over a number of years, um, and then even more condensed over a few months prior to COVID, additional ideas. And this was the idea that resonated with me. One, yeah. um, it, it's a simple concept, and it's 
it's not rocket science to build, but nobody's done it, right? Um, and there, there's, there's lots of potential affiliate-like, but nobody's engaging fans with whatever currency is valuable to their fan base at the time, right? So it's, it's up to the creator to create their own currency or something of value between them and their fan base. And so many of the ideas that Aston had come to me with were very much what you said, great big giant creator ideas that um, if we're not universal music, we'd never get done, right? And so when this idea came and, and after the research, they showed me that it hadn't been built yet, I was all in. It took about a 20 minute conversation by the time we got to that point. And oh, so wow. it, it's exciting. Um, and we've watched it come from, you know, these guys paper napkin um, a year ago in March to, you know, we're launching on July 6th. I think I just said that on a podcast, so I guess it better happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> official. It's official. Got to stick with it. What What were some of the other names uh, that originally came out of this? Because that's it. This name that y'all stuck with is great. I love it, by the way. It's a, it is a great name. But I'm, this is the kind of name where you know there was other names around this. Right. Oh, it's certainly. Kind of... So, so, so I'll, I'll give a quick color on this one. This the company had an original name. Uh, we were called Crowdlink. Okay. And um, not too long after I got involved, um, I just asked the simple question: "Hey guys, anybody ever check to see if uh, anybody's using the term Crowdlink before we name our company this?" Ah, well, we already named the company that, but you know, we think it's all right. <laughs> well, turns out we were wrong. And we had we a had, Silicon Valley moment. We had to, it was an aha <laughs> moment for, for totally. the team. Like, okay, totally. back to the drawing board. But it was the best aha moment we could have possibly had for our branding. And yeah. um, a series yeah. of names came out. I should let John rattle off the, the laundry list of names that, that came up. But Crowdmouth is where unanimously we all landed and were able to secure it, right? Nice. Yeah. yeah, the process actually for the name, Jonathan and I immediately, as soon as we found out that we weren't going to be able to use Crowdlink. So the company's name is actually Crowdlink Inc. That's the that's the formal uh, legal name of the company. But, uh, you know, Jonathan and I both do what we do, which is immediately freak out and start coming up with as many creative names as we possibly can. So we both independently came up with probably 50 different name ideas, crowd this, you know, link that, you know, we we're just really trying very hard to come up with something cool and creative. And, you know, I think we both had at least 50 names on the list. And the one name that we both had was crowd mouth. Oh, and oh, that, wow. That's actually how we, that's how up. you know, that's, that's how it. you know. Yeah. That's how you know. Oh, yeah. So awesome. we, we do, we like the branding quite a bit and we're, we're happy that, you know, one of those fortuitous things that, uh, we were we felt like we may have been guided a little bit along the way in that sense so we're it, it really was happy fortunate we're accident right yep those are the best kind to That's be it. honest right yeah no the name fits uh everything fits about like you said it's a simple idea you really get it it makes sense uh from a creator standpoint i'm sure creators would be brainstorming on different ways uh to use the platform as well and how they can leverage that and uh you know funnel you know all their fans and reward them in a nice way uh that makes it easy uh for them you know yeah. you know let me let me ask you this um jonathan you, you know you're coming from the artist standpoint from the creator standpoint which is crucial to this project right if that doesn't work it doesn't work right same from the fan standpoint um what what were were there any ideas like that didn't get used or you know, in, in this that you sort of nixed that, that they had thrown out, you're like, no, 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 this is not going to work for people. Yeah. I think there's a, you know, I think the, the inclination is to make the platform as robust and as many options and, you know, thoroughly develop it as possible. But I've been such a stickler about just keeping our true North simplicity and ease of use and, knowing what we do and doing that incredibly well. And so, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff that we've talked about that actually was developed in the MVP of the app that we've hidden, features that we've hidden just because we didn't feel like they were essential. And we yeah. feel like they add extra unnecessary steps that 95 plus percent of users are not going to be interested in using. So yeah, there, there's been a lot of that and just trying to keep it streamlined and trying to remember what our mission is 
and um, and staying true to that throughout the process. So that's yeah, it's been a challenge, but it's you you kind of veer off course and then you recenter yourself and you get back to center sure. and you're able to make good decisions. So it's we we've, we've stayed pretty true to our original vision. What yeah. do, what do you what do you see as like artist you know roadblocks? Like what do you think artists are gonna? Be? Well, I mean why roadblocks to crowd mouth. Yeah, like why wouldn't they want to join that? Right? I, I mean. I think the biggest roadblock is just the fact that in their minds, they're sitting and they're thinking, oh, I got to learn another platform or now I have to do sure. another social media platform, which sure. we're already inundated with plenty of those. We already have that's a there, right? that's and a then, solid argument. I mean, it is. Yeah. And so what's interesting is that, you know, so one thing we're trying to get across to people is that CrowdMouth is definitely not another social media platform. We're looking at it. And we've built it as an augmentation or almost think of it like a social media plugin for all of your social media. Ah, so it, I got it plugs in okay. and it integrates with your social media and it yeah. amplifies your social media. It's not in competition with, um, it's not, um, it's not an, another platform where you have to think of creative posts for, and you do that already. You're doing that with Instagram, with you know, whatever your platform of choice is, you're already having to be creative there. We just want to take that creativity and give you a plugin by which you can amplify your voice on those platforms. So trying to get that across to people is a challenge. Um, but when people use it, the feedback, you know, we've gotten is good. It's effective. It works. It works surprisingly well. And it's been it's been awesome to start getting some of that data back and That's just awesome. to be able to compare that with, you know, we got this much reach. We got this many unique people seeing. We did a Jamestown uh, promotion on a new single and we got over 600 unique sets of eyeballs on our single. And we thought, gosh, that's over a thousand dollars we would have had to spend if we were buying click ads. And, you know, this is, these are better quality views. These are people that have been recommended by their friend. It's a higher quality view at a lower cost. So, you know, that it's that kind of stuff that gets us really excited because it's like, wow, it, it works. Our vision is coming That's to awesome. life. I yeah. see it used. I, I see people posting uh, the links. Um, and you know what else I saw too? You know, you mentioned like the reason y'all wanted to get this going is because you saw the way fans were sharing stuff already, right? And you thought, okay, mm -hmm. you know what they're also doing that I didn't even know? They'll, they'll sell your Patreon for you too. So you got like little mini salesmen out there that are out there going, yep. oh, you, you don't know how to sign up for Homeboy's Patreon? Let me show you how. This is how you click totally. through here, you do that. And these are the, and you see them screenshotting like the different um, tiers for the person and like selling it to them. I'm like, bam, yeah. th there's a point for you, you know, like they can, and they're not totally. doing it. They're not doing it for a, uh, you know, a selfish, right? Like I need these things, right? It's yeah. more like, I love this artist and I want more people to know about it because if he's successful, he stays around. I get to continue listening uh, to them, absolutely, right? Absolutely. Look, there are a lot of artists that have come and gone because they didn't know how to market themselves. And a yeah. lot of people are great at creating compelling art. They're not great at creating compelling marketing strategy. Sure. And so what we want to do is be an intermediary between a, a creator and their fan base that allows them to a put themselves in the catbird seat and not be dependent on having to drop a lot of coin on a social media site to advertise, not having to hire a third party to come in and build your social media strategy, um, be able to utilize a fan base that might only number, you know, 500 strong, but those 500 people really care. They want to see you grow. They want to see you stick around. They want to see you be able to focus more time on creating content and less time working a day job, for instance. And so, you know, they want to do that. They want they want to support art. They want to believe that they believe in. And they also want to tell their friends. They want to be the one who, who, who tells their friends about it. I love telling my yeah. friends about cool stuff that I find sure. because I think Absolutely. they're really going to dig it. And I think that, man, if you could, if you can share a song that has hit you in a good place and you just love it like that song in a way makes your life a little bit better and if you can spread that and make somebody else's life a little bit better because you know that's going to be their favorite song 
that's uh that's something you want to do anyways and then if you could do that and then also get a signed vinyl from that artist you know as a way to say thanks for you sending <laughs> their music to 25 of your friends that's a pretty Absolutely. good deal I mean, are you kidding yeah. me? Absolutely. I mean, a hundred percent. Like, yeah, that, that's another thing that attracted me to the idea. It was like, man, there's some real stuff here you're getting, right? Yeah. It's not like a coupon for some bullshit, you know, two years down the road, you know, some, just some right. stupid shit that you can't really use. You yeah, know? no, it's, it's mean. Just being stuff. real. I mean, I'm just being real, right? Like as a fan, yeah. you're just not going to waste your time with some nonsense. Like, it, this is legitimate stuff from the artist. Uh, it's personalized. It's amazing. I think it brings the artist and the fan closer and it brings them closer yeah. in a way that's healthy. We would like to believe that it's healthy. We feel like it's a way that's supportive. Um, it maintains integrity. It's not just like, um, I'm paying you for X video. Now go make my video. It's, Hey, I really helped. I helped your career in a way that as a fan, the best way I could. And, um, and now I'm doubly excited because I'm getting, you know, something cool, whether it be like a personal video or a signed album or whatever it is. And, you know, we, we feel like Crowdmouth is the only platform to our knowledge that does this and it keeps that relationship healthy yeah. Yeah, and nice. respects that sort of artistic integrity, if you will. That's awesome. No, I think it's great. But let me ask all of y'all this. Are there any fears of like people abusing the platform? Essentially, uh, I was trying to think in my mind if you know how people will, you know, create fake accounts right on on Facebook and Instagram like that, like as a fan, I mean, not 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 creators abusing it, but just from a fan standpoint, are there ways for people to spam this and get likes and get shit? And then right. say, I don't know. I mean, I'm just again, spitballing here. Oh. Yeah. So from a technical perspective, you know, almost anything with the processor can be hacked or changed. Right. But we have fraud detection and fraud prevention built into the system. Um, no systems airtight, but we'll sure. see it coming and we'll catch you really quick after if, if you start trying to auto generate a phony. That's, account. That's or, what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, right for no. the artist they don't want to be giving away free shit to like you know what i mean some bullshit yeah, yeah totally. right to a to a russian click bot yeah exactly yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. So we, right. we have detection mechanisms in place to help us with that um and nice. so if they did get in we'd catch it quick it's a, nice. that's a good segue into into sort of the culture and um and what we feel like is the value of the platform so i think one inherent thing about crowd mouth that I do believe will thwart some of that. It's just the nature of the nature of these, for lack of a better term, let's call them rewards. The sure. nature of the rewards are such that like a lot of these things are personal videos. So, you know, it's a personal thank you video made out to you. So it's, you can pick up the app and hit record and record a video that says, Hey, Patrick, just wanted to say thanks for spreading the word. And, you know, helping, you know, helping us build our career. You're the reason we're able to do what we do. Send. Wow. No one's going to try to scam. Like no real fan who that's going to mean something to is going to want to get that because they scammed the system. Yes. You start offering signed merchandise. You do start to open the door for more, um, for, for, for more of that kind of nefarious stuff. But that is where, you know, we make our best efforts on the technology side to, uh, to inhibit that and to pick up on that and to flag that when it happens and deal with it accordingly. Um, but a lot of this stuff, awesome. just the nature of it is so personal. We feel like sure. that in and of itself, uh, you know, kind of takes care of some aspect of it. Yeah, that's a good point. For sure. There's also, Patrick, a way, you know, as a creator in the app. So when you get a request for a reward fulfillment, you see everything about that person, right? You see if, if it's a physical reward, they're going to have to provide shipping information. If it's and you're going to see their name, their profile, how many clicks they have for you, which links they're currently sharing of yours. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of things just built into the mechanics of the app that would absolutely flag in a, in a creator's mind uh like hey this is not real this person is not real i've never heard of this person you yeah. know because that's a, a big part of the platform is 
from a creator standpoint, who are my top fans, you know, and you can see them and, and all of your fans can also see who the top fans are, who have the most activity. Oh, so, really? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's there's, there's, there's a leaderboard and, and, uh, you know, a top fans aspect to every ca a creator. Oh, so wow. fans, fans are able to be noticed and recognized by their yeah. favorite creator as, Hey, I'm your top fan or I'm your top, one of your top 10 fans. I'm really working for you. They can also be seen by their peers as, Hey, I'm the top, I'm, I'm, you know, Jamestown revival's top fan. Yeah, totally. So that's, you know, that's not only fun, but that, that also kind of built into the system allows for creators to get to know their fans, know who their top fans are, know where they're coming from geographically, those sorts of things. And also know, Hey, is this real? Is this person real or not? Is this a real human being? Or is this, is this, you know, a bot, if you will. Sure. So to my knowledge, we'll be one of the only platforms out there from a uh, social media marketing and campaigning that's going to deliver the fan back to the creator. Yeah. I see like what you're the, saying. Not, not a, not masked data, not generic data, yeah. real data. Who, yeah. who is your top fan and how do you contact them? I mean, right? that's powerful, say, right? It, it, it's creator only, right? Fans yeah. don't get the contact creators. Right? Sure, but of course. The yeah. Way. The other way, we're going to give the, the creator full access to his fan base. That's doing the street team work for him. Yeah, for yeah, her. absolutely. I mean, like you guys said earlier, it, it's like it's the it's the value of that engagement is so much higher, right, than other engagement you're going to get somewhere else. And that is powerful, right? It's like, I, I, you know, I think from a chef perspective, right, for myself, I, I think of, okay, a customer sits down to eat at my place, okay. Not that, I'm, you know, the rule is you're not trying to gorge people when they come to eat at your place because you want them to keep coming back, right? You're not trying to sell them the kitchen sink every time they come in, right? It's a long-term, I want you back once a month to eat with us. Okay, so... But the idea is you want to try to get the most out of people, right? So you upsell. There's something at the beginning, something at the end, right? Some coffee or dessert, right? Some other stuff to boost the ticket up, right? To, to make the value of this engagement higher each time I see you. So that, that's the way I see it. Like I get more out of it. It's more personal. Um, and, and honestly, you know, it's great for the artist. Okay, it is. But at the end of the day, fans are the ones that, right? make all this happen so if they're the ones you know feeling that trust that safety that that like awesome connection to the that's where the real magic is that's, right yeah got it yeah i mean on, on on instagram for instance right you can see a lot about your favorite creator you can you can learn about them you can like them you can inst direct message them but there is no real engagement and this platform you know we call it an, uh, the ultimate engagement platform because you are in, you are becoming a part of your favorite creators team directly. Yeah. Um, they are, they are effectively giving you assets of theirs that they want to promote. And you are then deemed with going out and spreading the word about those assets. There really isn't a mechanism right now that we're aware of that allows that level of engagement. And, uh, you know, it, not only is it great for the fan, but it is incredibly impactful to John's point about, I mean, for the creator, it's just, the, the data we have so far is tremendous. And we've only run two campaigns, one for Jamestown and one for Bob Schneider. Now a second, now we've created another campaign. But, you know, wow. uh, what was really rewarding was to see how quickly, once we posted Bob's, uh, Bob Schneider's uh, single is actually releasing today, we posted that on Wednesday for what's called a pre-save campaign. And immediately we had, you know, over a hundred clicks. Uh, we had, you know, 30 people grabbing that link and sharing it immediately within 10 minutes, you know, which for us is, is huge validation and gets us really excited. So you're absolutely right. The fans are going to drive the, the, the scale of things, but it's also incredibly impactful for, for a creator. And, uh, it's a symbiotic relationship without one or the other. So the creators have to engage. They have to, you know, post, they have to create campaigns. They have to have things that they want to promote and share. And the fans kind of have to do their part. And it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship in that sense. And that's really what drives the, the mechanics of the, of the platform. And once what we have learned from this beta phase that we're in and this testing phase that we're in is that the mechanics are there, right? The mechanics are very strong. Uh, they work very quickly. They work exactly how we intended and, and we're hoping and honestly, probably better than we were hoping. 
uh, what we need to do now is really find the audience, right? So is it, is it um, you know, independent artists with, let's call it 5,000 uh, followers on Instagram? You know, is that the sweet spot? Is it YouTubers? Is, or is it people that are creating content on a daily or weekly basis? We believe that that's our, our yeah. next uh, that's point. You know, for us to really figure out how do we speak to that group and get our messaging to them? Because we feel like if you're creating content on a weekly basis, if you have a podcast or a, a YouTube episode that comes out weekly and you're using Crowdmouth to promote all of those episodes and using the built in features of something like YouTube to say, hey, click the link below in the description to find out how to get some really cool, unique rewards. I mean, that that's what drives the engine and that's what really makes things go viral, if you will. So, you know, our goal right now is to get this out in front of as many different <laughs> categories of content creators as we can so that we know who is that perfect, you know, uh, creator for us? Who is the target audience? Uh, we think it's going to be very broad. We think it's going to be chefs, restaurant owners, you know, fitness uh, instructors, oh, interesting. local. You know, we, we think it can yeah. be great for brick and mortar. We think this can be great for really anybody who's using the internet to promote their content or to, pro to promote their business. They could use a platform like Crowdmouth to really drive engagement of their followers and fans, give them really cool, exclusive, unique rewards, and, and scale their business very quickly. And the data that we have so far in this short period of time that we've been, you know, launched in beta, it supports that 100%. So we're very excited about that. No, that's awesome. So basically, is it right at first anybody can join up? Is that the deal as far as creator goes? Yeah. So right now we're in a closed beta, which means we're it's invite only from a creator's perspective. We're sure. very close to opening up the floodgates to to all, any and all creators where they would have the ability to have self-service account creation, and that sort of thing, authenticate through Google and Facebook, all that. We're working yeah. on that literally as we speak. Right now, any fan can can join the platform, create their own account and start following the creators that are on the platform, be it limited. Yeah. Um, but in the very near future, that will be the same thing for creators. Um, you know, we're very much focused on music right now. We have a lot of influence and reach in that space just because of our of our history. But, um, you know, ultimately the vision for this company is to be anybody, you know, creator is, is a very broad term. I mean, as a chef, you're a creator. As a, sure. uh, anybody that is creating a piece of marketing content is a creator in our opinion. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're creating services, they're creating all sorts of things. So, you know, it can be as broad as an Etsy store owner. We really feel like the Etsy community could use this platform very, very well and successfully. Uh, you name it. Honestly, if there's somebody that is using links on the internet to promote their business or their brand or their message or their nonprofit, you, they should be used to do it. Yeah. Could, could people do like just an event? Like they don't necessarily want to does that make sense? Like, I just want to use the crowd mouth for this uh, festival that's happening. Okay. We're going to use crowd mouth for just a festival. Absolutely. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's, there's start, starting end dates on campaigns. So you could say, Hey, okay. if it's a, if it's a concert, let's say, and that concert, the, the ticket link doesn't go live until July 1st. Well, you say it's the campaign starts on this day, July 1st and ends on the day of the, of the event. Got so it. within the, the, the technology would essentially, it wouldn't uh, publish that particular campaign until the start date. And then at the end date, it would, mm -hmm. the campaign would end and it would no longer be active. So 100%, you could use it for really any physical event happening. You could use it for, you know, an ongoing, you could just say, Hey, look, I'm trying to drive awareness about my, uh, my Instagram page or my YouTube page. And that could be an ongoing, yeah. ongoing link that or campaign that is active forever in perpetuity. So wow. uh, we're trying to build in a lot of different ways for, the create what we want is the creator to get creative with the process and figure sure. out hey look, this is a tool for you as a creative person uh, or a business owner to really create to Donnie's point your own uh, economy or your own um, your own value and uh, and and we think that that's what's going to happen once people realize the power of the platform and the flexibility of the platform the the sky's the limit and and we, we really i mean if restaurants can use it that's interesting because dude think about how many restaurants are right like and once things in restaurants are the way it works is like 
it catches wildfire. So like if somebody's using something, it's, oh, that's what everybody used. That's and I get it. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, that's the way, you know, the food industry works. Um, so like if that caught on, like, like a Yelp page, for instance, when Yelp came out, every business got the, Yelp, even though they hate maybe I'm not saying they're going to hate crown out, but they hated Yelp or they hated using it because of whatever bullshit reviews and nonsense. Right. But the idea if a restaurant could utilize this and streamline their engagement, like that has a ton of power behind it. I mean, to be frank with you, like that's a, that's a whole like, you know, industry unto itself. This massive, um, I didn't well, and how that. that, and how that works in the real world is, you know, one of our reward types that you can offer is a discount code. This is just me oh my spitballing God. off the top Absol of my, No, 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 for sure. Head. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, you, you know, tell everybody how much you enjoyed your dinner at XYZ restaurant. Um, and you know, 20 points you can exchange, you know, 25% off or 50% off or, oh, you wow. know, at your next meal and you oh, get a little man. coupon code in your crowd mouth account that you can show um, that you can redeem next time you're in the, in the restaurant. So Bro, how, how many people post their food pics? Let's be yeah, real here. There you go. Absolutely. There you go. Exactly. It's yeah. the most shared thing on, I think online are food pics uh, for sure. I, I, I believe it's just food pics. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I didn't we feel like restaurant. Yeah, we feel like the restaurant category could be a, a huge segment. I if if this was around when I had my you know I had Boca there in Austin, dude, I'd be all over this. I a hundred percent, I would be all over this. I'd already be thinking of things I would do, and you know, again, stuff that people are already doing. You want to do stuff for them anyway, and you kind of feel yeah. like the stuff you do gets lost for people and you yeah. don't really get any value. For it. Let's say you do a giveaway. Well, not many people, you know, join the giveaway, but you still have to give that shit away. So you're like, God damn it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You wanted more engagement. I mean, it's just real, you know, it's just being real, right? Like, so. And as a creator, I, people are involved on all kinds of different levels. And so oftentimes those big massive giveaways where it takes, you know, a hundred plus shares and like yeah. a whole bunch of effort, you're really kind of alienating the 90 plus percent of your fans who are fans, but they're not crazy super fans. And Crowdmouth basically allows people to engage on all different types of intensity levels. So, you know, if you send it, if you share it with five people as a business, you can offer something for those people. If you share it with 105 people as a business, you can offer something a lot better for those people. So I think it's wow. it's something that's a lot more democratic in that way. There's something that's a great for point. everybody. What a great point. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Just what a great point. No, no, you're no, you're no. you're all good. Um, so yeah, just it's it's cool to start thinking about some of these, you know, the possibilities. Just with basically we we built out templates, and our idea was let's build out templates and then let people run wild creatively with how they want to utilize these templates. And so it's like, we've got discount codes, we have video and or media. Um, we have social media tags, shout outs, et cetera. Uh, and we have physical. And between those categories, you can really do, you can, you can really get creative. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. What's the fan? I mean, I mean, like you guys said, there, there's been shares and stuff, but so I'm assuming the the two campaign or the two uh, artists that, you know, uh, between y'all and uh, Bob, right, like putting out what has been the sort of fan interactions uh, or response or did y'all set up a way for them to sort of give feedback or you're not looking for that? I mean, I don't know. I'm curious. Working yeah, we have the, the initial fans, I mean. Yeah. So our we got feedback through direct communication from fans. So the way we uh, conducted our outreach initially to get a sort of closed door group of fans into the platform, we followed up with them, you know, for feedback. Um, and we got some great feedback and also just in how, so one great thing I feel about Crowdmouth is the fact that as a creator, you are completely free to determine what kinds of rewards you want to offer. So Jamestown Revival, my band, for instance, we wanted to keep our rewards focused more on physical rewards. So we didn't offer anything digital, um, no social media related, it was all physical. So we had you know, everything from a signed guitar pick for just a few clicks to um, signed handwritten lyrics or a signed vinyl. 
And those were more premium, you know, 35 plus uh, points. And a lot of people held out and redeemed for those, you know, the, the signed vinyl were really popular. Uh, people really seem to like that. And then the signed lyrics. And right now you can't get that anywhere else. You can only get that by actually really helping us to spread the word about our music. And I love that. I love that you can't just go buy it. You can't just go pick it up somewhere or order that's it awesome. off a store. You it's a crowd mouth actually... exclusive. Right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, that's cool. That's how, I mean, I get it. That's awesome. We want to look yeah. into that more too, as far as the exclusivity of things, meaning that, you know, you can only get these types of rewards on Crowdmouth. That's something yeah. that we feel like is really going to set us apart. Sure. Um, you know, this, the conversation that we're having right now is kind of leaning me towards, you know, the mechanics. Maybe we should explain the mechanics a little bit real quickly, just, you know, to the, to the audience. So you've got two audiences, right? And in in, you've got two apps. There is a fan app, which is just called Crowdmouth on both iOS and Android uh, or Google Play. And that is, you know, and it, as a fan, you create your bio or you create your, your profile. And then immediately you're driven to a creator discovery page, which allows you to search for other creators. Right now there's about 30 creators that are on the platform. Uh, there's really only two that are active and that's again, strategic where we're going through the testing phase. Uh, but ultimately we want to have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not more creators on the platform, all segmented by music, podcasts, you know, videographers or, or vloggers, you know, YouTubers, um, personalities, influencers, that sort of thing, and, and really build and then brick and, you know, businesses, brands, real realtors, you know, I mean, you name it, we'll eventually have a lot of different categories and silos. But uh, from a fan's perspective, you know, all you really do is you join someone's crowd, which means you follow them. So, so Jamestown, for instance, if you're a Jamestown fan, or if you were led to Crowdmouth from Jamestown, you would, you would find them in the app, you would follow them, you would join their crowd. And then immediately you, you'll see all of their active campaigns. You can sh pick which ones you want to share. And as soon as you hit, I want to share this new single, right? You, it copies it to your clipboard on your phone. You hit, uh, I want to open, I want to share this with my friends in a text thread. You open up your, your, you know, favorite text thread with 20 people on it. And you say, Hey, have you guys heard Jamestown's new, new single? It's fantastic. I love it. Here it is. Check it out. Every time someone clicks on that, you get a point. Every unique click, you get a point for that. And they accrue, obviously. And that's really how the process works for a fan. There are, you know, you can go over to Bob Schneider's uh, profile at that point and pick out which campaigns you'd like to share from Bob. Do the same process. So now you've got multiple links out there that are all accruing points for you individually. Uh, and then as they accrue and you get more clicks or points, you can then redeem them for exclusive rewards. From a creator's perspective, so there's the crowd mouth for creators app um the process is very similar i mean they look similar uh but as a creator you create your profile and then you create your rewards first so you have to have a couple of rewards in there for people to redeem and then you go and, and you pick out what pieces of content it is you're trying to promote so right now with bob for instance we're very much focused on the single release for his upcoming record that comes out in august so we're releasing singles every three weeks and so Today, for instance, we have a single coming out. We posted that on Wednesday to give everybody a little heads up. And, you know, that that drives the engine. So uh, that's really it. All you're doing as a as a creator is taking links, URLs that you have to whatever piece of content it is you're trying to share. And you post them in, you paste them into Crowdmouth. It automatically generates a new URL and we call it a campaign or a campaign link. And you share that with your social media following. You go to Facebook and you say, okay, I've got a new campaign. Uh, I'm using Crowdmouth to promote it. I'd love your help as my as a fan to spread the word about it. And in return, I'm going to give you some amazing exclusive rewards that you can only get through Crowdmouth. Click this link to find out how to get yours. And that's really as simple as the process is for both fan and creator. There's a lot of technology behind that, obviously, that... Sure. We are working very hard to fine tune and make sure that it's simple and easy and fun for both the fan and the creator. And the cool thing is every time a creator does something new, creates a new campaign, creates a new reward, uh, or even just wants to post directly to their crowd mouth followers, we have a feed for both fans and creators on your feed. So for instance, when we, when we posted a new campaign for Bob on Wednesday, 
all of Bob's followers got a notification on their phone that said, Hey, there's a new reward, a new campaign for Bob. Uh, uh, go okay. check it out. When they click that notification, it takes them directly to that campaign, which then they can start immediately sharing. Uh, but they also, it, everything is also posted to a feed inside of the app that allows for everybody who's following Bob, for instance, to stay up to date on what he's doing. And Bob can also post a bulletin directly to his followers on the feed, just saying, Hey guys, just wanted to say thanks so much to, to all of my followers. It's been really fun here on Crowdmouth. You guys are making a huge impact on my career. Thanks so much. You know, it's sure. a one way yeah. communication from the creator to their followers to be able to, you know, communicate new events, really any, any information they want to uh, pass along to their followers and do it right in the app. Oh, that's awesome. No, it's great. Um, I, I think the point system is great too. Cause I was thinking, um, you know, if you're somebody uh, like y'all were talking about earlier that, you know, is sort of involved, but maybe not super fan, right? All the way, you, you kind of just share things here and there. Well, those points accumulate and you hang on to them and you get something nice for them. Instead of like each cam, I w at first I was thinking just the one share had to get to that point for you to get that. Does that make sense? Like, unless you hit the big on one post share, but I you know, you can add them up. You can bank them as y'all say, yeah, right? And, you, and then you have a crowd mouth wallet. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. You have totally. a wallet in your app or crowd mouth and it'll show you every creator for which you've obtained points. Cause not all creators will have points going at the same time. We're hoping they all have rewards, but sure. they may not all be having active campaigns because of the ebb and flow of the business. Sure. And so the, you, you accrue. So yeah, yeah. I make 20 shares on, on Bob's new song this time, but I may get 30 on the next one in three weeks. hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was thinking again, if it was like, you know, if you didn't get it on this one, that's too competitive. Right. But this opens the door for everybody, but also lets you be as competitive as you want. Really. That's what it is. It lets you be as yep. involved as you want and you get, you know, tit for tat basically. Got it. You got what it. You, what you put in is what you get out and that's, you can't ask exactly. for anything more. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna yep. hire you as a as a salesperson. By the way, you're, Listen, you're killing I'm here. it. You're I'm killing here, it, guys. I'm here. If I can wear this hat, I'm in. <laughs> you can wear Listen, whatever I'm you want. Funny hat guy normally, right? <laughs> oh. Whoa, whoa, funny hat. Let's not get carried away, Donnie. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, that, that, that that's a cool hat though. <laughs> Donnie's hat game is strong for sure. Listen, this is the cover up the. The do guy, like my, my body is so sore. I just got back. I just started uh, working out for summer. You know, you try. Oh, let me go to the gym. Let me do some. Wrong idea. Um, <laughs> my, my body is like just dying. I'm I'm literally dying. I can barely. I can't comb my hair. I can't <laughs> even. Two weeks and you'll get past it. Oh, uh, dude, that they say that I. You know, I said that two weeks ago. It never goes away for me. I don't, I'm in constant pain forever. I don't know. Well, good for you. We'll see. We'll see. Hey. Oh, please. Only because, you know, my wife's like, let's go. So, I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's do this anyway. Um, all right. What, what did we not talk about that we didn't bring up? I pretty much y'all even answered a lot of my questions. Uh, oh, would y'all ever think of doing physical like events, like a crowd mouth event and put on and have different creators there? And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've thought a lot about, you know, from a, from a marketing standpoint, we would love to be involved in some of the upcoming festivals. There's a lot of them coming totally. up. Totally. I mean, South by, right? Like, let's Absolutely. be real. South by, ACL. Uh, yeah. There's so many of them that are happening this year that uh, that's that's really a matter of, of where we stand from a fundraising standpoint in the near future. But um, yeah, we, we would love to be a part of it. Eventually, we'd love to have our own events, to your point, I think. Uh, crowd mouth events, but right now we're going to strategically position ourselves with some really impactful uh, and really, you know, festivals and events that really go well with the target that the target audience that we're going after. So music festivals, absolutely conferences, that sort of thing. We're going to make a big push here in the near future to to be involved in as many of those as we possibly can. Oh, that's awesome. Well, look, we're, I know, I, you know, when y'all open it up to everybody, I'm pretty sure we're going to sign up for this. I mean, why wouldn't you? I just don't see why you wouldn't sign up for this. I mean, to be oh. frank with you. We, couldn't man, agree we, we appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, I, man, ju I just want to say I love how I love how superimposed I look. I look like <laughs> I look like I'm riding the it's dog. the neck. It's the neck. I look area. like I'm riding the dog on never ending story. <laughs> <laughs> like Falcor. <laughs> 
It's so good. Oh, dog. That uh, green screen shit was the best back then. Yeah. That's I, I, I literally, I look like an 80s movie right now. <laughs> it's really great. Your background is very stationary, but you're, you're bouncing around pretty good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, dude, I'm here. What do you, I'm here. I'm in the studio right now. Yeah. What are you talking My about? And yeah. With a disappearing hand. It's one of my party tricks. In Iowa, in a cornfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you guys are all in different places. Is that made it, uh, well, I guess COVID and lockdowns, um, you've had to sort of work on this that way. Yeah. Right. We've had to get crafty, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we try to spend as much time in the same place as we can. We have, this is actually our office here, but um, yeah, it's, We've learned everybody has man everybody's learned how to be remote and make the most of it and this is our new i think i don't see this going away to be honest with you i mean you know flying to la is we're, in fact we have a trip coming up to la but uh you know those trips are going to become far and few between i think when you can make deals and and do business over zoom or whatever it's i mean why would you so i think we've become very efficient in that sense um, we all travel quite a bit. We're all very busy. We all have families. We're all, you know, doing other things as well right now. So, um, you know, we have to, we have to be as technologically savvy from that perspective as we possibly can. Sure. For sure. We, we all live in the same town, but it's, it's not always often that we're all in the same town, if that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. Well, y'all are busy guys. Y'all doing a lot of things, you know, outside of this, you know, so yeah, it, it only makes sense. Um, for sure. Well, James, to that point, Jamestown's got some tours coming up. We've got, you know, Bob's incredibly busy. Things are really picking up from a music standpoint, music business standpoint, which is incredibly encouraging and uh, a long time coming. This has been a long year for all of us. So it's, you sure. know, Bob had a show last night at the Long Center, which was fantastic. You know, 500 people still, you know, socially distanced and, and yeah. uh, safe, but it was just so nice it's such a good feeling to get back out and, oh, and have these events and people's uh energy level is through the roof for these right. Shows, right they now. really just, are it really is you're right people want to get out and have fun again and and uh you know we want to help spread the word about those events through crowd mouth so this is going to be the best summer for music and events in a long long ass time man because both artists and fans are fucking ready to get out there and do some shit you know i mean for real like i know i am i'm, I'm saying yes to everything i wasn't really you know <laughs> like that i'm just like anybody invites me to, i'm going i don't even i just want to get out i just want to do shit i'm vaccinated let's do this i don't know if that's the right it's attitude the that's right. the attitude that's the attitude i'm taking it's the, the attitude that we have in texas that's right <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yes. This is a Texas podcast, right? L listen, the signs went from, you know, please wear a mask to if you want. It just literally just says it has a picture of a mask and it just if you want. Yeah. 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 But, they went from from at face level. Now I've noticed they're down at the bottom. Like, hey, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's recommended. They're in the but, corner. Yeah. It's, it's at the yeah. bottom. It's like and my wife yeah. still wears one everywhere. But I'm like and she's vaccinated. But I'm just like. Listen, I'm back. I'm done. I'm unless I need to. Unless there's some. I mean, I'm just. I'm done with it for now. Yeah. Well, we, we all obviously want to be respectful of other people and all that for sure. But uh, you know, I mean, if I go in and the business requires, I put it on. Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that jackass. Uh, you know, do, uh, on, at Target, you know, causing a scene at the entrance. That's not me. Yeah, of course. But we're with you. I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. I, it's, I'm ready to roll. You know, I think uh, we're following the, the the guidelines that we're given, and, and those guidelines have opened up quite a bit. So it's it's time to roll, in my opinion. Oh, that's awesome. What what tour, do you want to throw out? Any tour dates you have uh, coming up? For um, for, for, James for James Town? Town? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're hitting the road in January. So we're, we're actually kind of finalizing our routing now and going through that and clearing holds on venues and it's exciting. So January, February, and March will be out, but we're basically, we're hitting every single major market uh, in the country. So it's going to be a pretty extensive run. Hell yeah. And, and Bob's got shows through the summer, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Things, yeah. Things are, are getting very busy. Um, you know, Bob, Bob isn't a traditional tour uh, artist, meaning that he doesn't go on long runs. 
he's basically on tour year round. Uh, he'll go on a week tour here and a week tour there, but, uh, yeah, Bob usually plays anywhere from 150 to 175 shows a year. And, uh, obviously we started the year off slow, but it's picking up. So, you know, go to bobschneider.com slash tours and, uh, there's, you'll see everything you need to know. No, that's awesome. I was at Bob's first, at least he said backstage, he said it was the first show he had done indoors. Yeah. At, um, well, gosh, I can't even think of the place now. The Kessler. That's yep. where it was at here in Dallas. Uh, and it was powerful, man. It was something, there was something magical in the room there for that show. Um, again, this is just a summer to see shows, man. Uh, you know, everyone's yeah. just. Every, every show. Right so far that's that he's done indoor outdoors it is it's insane the, right the yeah it's just it's inspiring i love it i mean it's totally. inspiring to the to the artist as well but it's being a part of the audience it's it's amazing it it's gonna last a couple years i think to I be hope. honest with I, that energy because we know you know it got taken away from us for right. a long time right. and like i think people are just gonna be grateful to have it for a while i, don't, I just don't think yeah. we're gonna forget about it so quickly you know Agreed. yeah anyway uh, was there anything, again, that I didn't bring up, you all wanted to mention? We'll, we'll throw all the links, descriptions, right? When this, uh, you said, well, July 6th, it, it goes live for everybody. We can right. we can hold this till July 6th if y'all want. Yeah, we can talk and about it. And, and pop it out then. I don't care. Whatever y'all yeah. want to do. That might be nice yeah. strategically so then people can just get on and, um, and sign up if they so choose. Yeah. That too. Yeah. That too. No. I'm, I'm, we're open to whatever whatever uh, works cool. to be honest with you so okay. if that would help it uh but yeah this is exciting guys uh this is a great app it absolutely makes sense it's great for fans uh, it's great for artists I, I just don't know who it's not great for i don't i don't i can't think of anybody so that's a good thing I mean, we, <laughs> we really do appreciate it thank you so much again for having us patrick yeah oh, this how, is awesome how, how can we talk about getting you on the platform let's do that Let's do it. I, I'm out. We're in, you know. How, how often are you releasing uh, episodes? Twi we do twice a week episodes, uh, but we release yeah. like clips of them, you know, through the week on YouTube, right? So, you know, but yeah, we release two episodes a week consistently, right? And this is what we do. I, I think a cool mm -hmm. reward would be if you were to, uh, from a fan's perspective, if you were to mention some fans at the beginning of the episode and give them a shout out. You know, you say, hey, look, you get 25 points. I'll Ooh. mention you in the next episode. Uh, That's I'll a great you idea. Tag you on, on Instagram or something. That's a great idea. Yeah, I love that idea. That's a that's a solid idea. Absolutely. Right. Because I'll who wouldn't want to hear their name out of my mouth? That's you know exactly that's right. right. I'm that's right, my dude. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. No, that's a great idea. Well, listen, guys. Yeah, best of luck. You know, we're here. We support whatever y'all need for sure. Um, you know, can't, can't say enough about this. This is amazing. So, yeah, this is a great conversation. I'm glad we got to just pick apart some different things and throw out some different stuff. I hope anybody listening gets a better idea of what this is, what it can be, and how beneficial it's going to be. And, uh, you know, make us rethink the way uh, we interact with fans and as fans, how we interact with the artists we love. So, Thanks. Thank you. Your enthusiasm is what we're looking for, right? And uh, that's the reaction and response that that we're hoping for from everybody as they, they see the platform come out. So, but thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, absolutely, guys. No, for sure. Well, listen, y'all have a good uh, rest of the weekend. Get out there, do something, have some fun, see your families. Mm -hmm. Thank get you. Out man. Of, Sounds get, good, man. Get out. Of, get out of that studio down there. Yeah, I got to get out of this place. <laughs> This is the Jamestown fathead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome, guys. Will y'all be good? Be safe. My best to you and your family. You too, Patch. Thank All you. Right. All right. See ya. Be safe. Awesome, guys. Later. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the end credits. This is everyone responsible for making the show happen. Executive producer, Sebastian Sauerborn. Podcast manager, Nevena Ponovich. Marketing Manager, Caroline Grape. Video and Audio Editors, Danilo Vojnov and Pavel Sebastianovich. Thumbnail Designer, Marco Vukovic. Social Media Manager, Ursa Rusman. Guest Outreach, Corey Menciez. Designing Image Quotes, Jay Apuya. 
Social media videos, Labri Fernandez. Outreach support, Yonet Del Mundo. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>